Welcome to episode two of Supervision Not Required. In this episode, we're going to do an introduction to Microsoft R as well as the R programming language. We'll do a discussion between the differences between R Open, Microsoft R Open, as well as Microsoft R Server, and then we'll go ahead and set up Microsoft R Open on a virtual machine in Azure. So what is R? R is a language, a community, and an ecosystem. It's a language because it's a programming language used primarily for statistics, analytics, and data science. It's also a data visualization framework, as well as being provided as open source. Uh, for community, it's got over two and a half million users currently. It's taught in most major university statistics programs, and there's also a large number of active and thriving user groups, including one here locally. Uh, for the ecosystem, on the CRAN, there's over 7,000 packages. On MRAN, there's another uh, large grouping of packages that are a little bit more tuned. And uh, many of these packages are also available um, in data, big data varieties. Quick history of R. R started as a research project back in 1993. It didn't really start getting going until 2007 with Revolution Analytics. Um, the R Consortium was founded in 2015. Uh, Microsoft acquired Revolution Analytics in 2015, and R Open was released. Microsoft R Open was released in 2016 this year. So you'll see a large variety of R integrations uh, coming into the Microsoft Data Platform uh, due primarily to this acquisition. Uh, interesting note is. R is the number one piece of software for data science and just holistically as a language R ranks number six out of the top ten most popular and used languages in the world as of 2015 so it's actually beating out JavaScript and Ruby which uh, I found quite uh, fascinating uh, right before it is C sharp Python C++ C++ C and Java so if you're going to program in R, you likely have a large variety of options sitting in front of you. Uh, built this capability comparison chart to showcase um, what the capabilities are. Um, you've got R Open, Microsoft R Open, and Microsoft R Server. Between the two um, open source and free flavors of R, I would go with Microsoft R Open hands down. It's free, but it has huge uh, performance increases, uh, specifically multi-threading and taking advantage of the Intel Math Kernel Library. This is going to increase performance on anything that's linear algebra based uh, through the roof. And uh, you'll find while doing R programming and statistics that these are going to be things that you do uh, quite frequently. Now the big differentiator between Microsoft R Open and Microsoft R Server is that Microsoft R Server has uh, commercial licensing, uh, but beyond that it also supports multi-node environments as well as in-memory and disk uh, management. So one issue that you'll often encounter is if you've got a four gigabyte box, uh, likely you've got some programs running there and you only have three gig available to you. So if you load a couple of CSVs or some data sets in and uh, the aggregation of all that data exceeds three gigabytes, you are going to have memory out exceptions. So uh, specifically in enterprise scenarios where your data sets are going to be uh, oftentimes larger than four to eight gigabytes, uh, you will need something like Microsoft R server so that you can actually do your analysis. Uh, nice things are that it will support um, all of your packages that you're used to and it uh, uses the same um, uh, programming model. Uh, it also comes with some specific scale and performance packages. So uh, from a learning perspective I would uh, start with Microsoft R Open and then migrate over to Microsoft R Server when I need to start doing some real heavy lifting. Um, we'll start talking a little bit more about R Server uh, just to give a little bit more in-depth there. Um, this chart here is a performance uh, comparison with actual numbers. Uh, this is using the US flight data over the past 20 years. Um, we ran it on a four core laptop with 16 gigabytes of RAM and a 500 gigabyte SSD. Uh, some of the things that you'll see is that when doing uh, larger data sets, R Open ran out of memory, 
while Revolution R was still able to crunch through that, and not only crunch through that, but it was able to crunch through the largest data set in 18 seconds when R Open took over a minute to uh, crunch just a medium to large data set. So uh, the performance increases are just absolutely phenomenal. Um, how is this actually accomplished? The, is, this is primarily through the licensed components. There's develop R, connect R, and scale R, as well as distributed R. So taking advantage of these license capabilities within our server is what's going to get you some of those huge performance boosts. So one of the big advantages to using Microsoft R server is its distributed capabilities. So distributed R is a package that comes with Microsoft R server and it allows you to connect to a variety of big data uh, appliances. So you've got HD Insights, uh, SQL Server 2016, it's going to be able to be run from the Visual Studio tools um, and there's also uh, support coming for Hadoop Spark. So currently there's Hortonworks, Cloudera, MapR, Teradata, Linux and Windows. Um, on the roadmap are going to be the items that you see in red. Um, it's always good to have a good case study. So Datasong is a company that processes in excess of 50 million records. Uh, those records get scored every day by our algorithms and they're getting 4x performance. Uh, what that means is that for a single customer on a single campaign, they're saving upwards of $250,000 uh, per campaign per customer. So huge savings there. Okay, so that's enough with Microsoft R Server. Let's talk a little bit more about Microsoft R Open. R Open is going to be the flavor of R that we're going to use for this training series coming up to teach the basics of the R programming language. It's an enhanced version of the open source R. Uh, it's 100% compatible with R uh, distributions and R related software. Uh, what that means is you can run uh, Microsoft R from within R Studio. In fact, I, that's exactly what we're going to do. Uh, you get full capabilities from uh, the CRAN or the Time Machine. Uh, the CRAN Time Machine is a flavor um, from Microsoft that allows for reproducibility. We'll talk a little more specifically about what that means and the impact uh, that has for you. Um, most importantly, it's uh, available cross-platform on Windows, Mac, as well as Linux. So uh, you can download that from imran.microsoft.com. Uh, we'll actually go ahead and do that during the hands-on lab portion of today. Microsoft R Open, the big advantage is the performance uh, compared to R Open. So both of them are free, but I wanted to demonstrate kind of why uh, we're going with Microsoft R Open uh, as opposed to the classic R Open. And you can see this chart on the bottom right. Uh, in the gray is the performance times for R Open. And then uh, you have an apples to apples comparison for the light yellow is Microsoft R Open on the same machine with one core. And then you have uh, in the dark yellow is uh, what that same code looks like running on a four core machine with Microsoft R Open. So you can see uh, the difference between R Open and Microsoft R Open is just orders of magnitude uh, different. Like Microsoft R Open just runs significantly faster and that's primarily due to the Intel math kernel libraries and the multi-threading capabilities. Uh, Microsoft R Open uh, on a four core uh, machine takes that a step further uh, because of the ability to take advantage of, of multiple CPUs. Uh, some of the nice things are that you don't need to change a single line of uh, R code. So basically take the same R code that you've had that's been running in R open and just install Microsoft R open instead and you'll see these same performance uh, increases. Now uh, some questions come up as far as uh, those performance increases uh, because they take advantage of the Intel math kernel library, what if I don't have an Intel uh, chipset? Um, there are um, other performance increases, so if you have a Mac or a Linux box, those capabilities are also built in. They just use uh, a slightly slower version of that same library. So uh, just be aware, you'll probably get faster performance on a Windows box, then your next faster performance on a Mac, followed by Linux uh, taking up the rear for performance. Uh, 
So the reproducibility problem. Uh, in scientific computing, or just computing in general, uh, reproducibility is a big problem. So uh, one of the traditional uh, issues with R-Open is that when you install packages, uh, it's installing those at that time uh, as they exist on the CRAN. Well, Microsoft has created a time machine or a snapshot uh, every day of the CRAN so that you can choose a specific day that you want to install packages from so that you ensure that you have the same packages uh, at the same version as they existed the day that you ran the experiment. This allows you to uh, recreate your experiment results and start debugging issues that you might find uh, from those days and uh, be able to give a colleague your code and they simply go and install that. You just need to use the checkpoint uh, package. So let's go ahead and get started with the Microsoft R Open uh, hands-on lab. What we're going to do is install R Studio, followed by installing Microsoft R Open. I'm going to show you a little bit about the MRAN, and we'll execute some simple code from R Studio using Microsoft R Open. So let's go ahead and get started. So what I have here is a standard Windows 10 laptop. Nothing super special about it. This is actually my uh, media rendering laptop, which just happens to not have any of my dev tools installed on it anymore. So we're going to go ahead and just install uh, Microsoft R Open as well as R Studio on here. So first thing that we do is pull up our favorite search engine, Bing, and then we'll search for R Studio. So just go and search for R Studio. It's pretty easy to find. It's usually up the first one, so it's rstudio.com and go navigate to that. And from here you'll find things, powerful IDE for R, R packages, bring R to the web, but one of the wonderful things is there's a download button. So we just go ahead, click the download button, and this will navigate us to one of the first steps. It's a little bit of a pain, but go ahead and then click R Studio Desktop. And what we'll do is download R Studio open source desktop. So we'll go ahead and click this button. This will bring us to yet another one. And then we need to go and find the installer for our particular operating system. So I have Windows 10. So here you can see you have options for uh, Windows-based operating systems, Mac-based operating systems, Ubuntu, as well as Fedora, Red Hat, and OpenSUSE. So I'm running Windows 10. We'll go ahead and uh, select the installer for Windows 10. Uh, select your installer. The uh, installation process is pretty much the same across all installations. So we'll give that a few seconds to, um, to download. All right, once we get the RStudio to uh, download, uh, you get an executable. So uh, this is the easiest way to install it. You can download the zips. You can go get the um, raw source code and compile it and do all that kind of nonsense if you want to. Might not be nonsense in your use case. I think it's nonsense because I just want RStudio and I just want it to work. Um, so we'll go ahead and just click through the uh, installation process. I do like shortcuts, so we're going to go ahead and install RStudio with the shortcut. Uh, one thing to note is that RStudio uh, usually does not come uh, with R installed, so we will need to install uh, R separately. Uh, we'll go ahead and showcase it and see if this actually can comes with R these days by attempting to execute some R code from the installer. So let's go ahead and minimize this. We'll go ahead and take a look for RStudio. So running Windows 10, you get the awesome search thing, so we'll go ahead and do RStudio. Desktop app. We can go ahead, right click, and we're going to pin this to the start. I like having my stuff on the start menu, so it's all nice and organized. So I click the start. I've got this pinned to my start. Let's ditch, uh, don't need Minecraft, unpin. Let's replace Minecraft with R Studio. Sign of a true developer, remove your games, add developer tools. So we'll go ahead and open R Studio. Uh, R Studio requires an existing installation of R in order to work. Please select the version of R to use. R does not appear to be installed. So R still does not come installed on our machine. So we need to go and install R prior to using it. So R Studio, great IDE, but you need R installed. So um, we were talking about this uh, R open stuff. Let's go ahead and navigate to the uh, MRAN and uh, grab Microsoft R open. So again, go to your favorite search engine, bing.com, and then you can look for Microsoft R open. Uh, this should bring you to imran.com. So imran.microsoft.com. 
go ahead and navigate here and we've got Microsoft R open let's just go ahead and click the download link start downloading Microsoft R open they really should have a better link here so we can see here that Windows uses uh, Microsoft R open uses the math kernel library let's go ahead and download Microsoft R open uh, this will give us yet another executable I'm downloading the Windows version again download the version of Microsoft R open that is uh, comparable for your particular platform so we've got everything let's go ahead and click this guy and get it up and running so we'll go ahead and go through this next next install in the base folder we're going to do the 64-bit installation I'm running a 64-bit operating system um, yeah we'll get all the files now we're just going to accept the defaults and get going no let's keep with MRO I would like a desktop option say version number and registry associate R with uh, our data files yep okay so we'll go ahead and go through that more coffee and we're done okay so completing the MRO for Windows so let's go ahead and kick off our studio again so we'll go ahead and go back to our start menu find our studio select that and we'll see that R is going to open come on buddy okay cool so we've got uh, Microsoft R open installed we've got R studio installed uh, let's go ahead and execute a little bit of code so let's open something up let's do uh, variable X and we'll store into it hello Microsoft R open control enter we'll see on this top right we have the values X hello Microsoft R open we can print print X and we'll see that we can print in the console pane down here so here's the console pane that uh, printing X actually says hello Microsoft R open and there you go so we're not going to showcase too much more than that that we're going to save uh, more of those capabilities for later but we've got Microsoft R open we're executing some standard R code we've got uh, values over here in the top right and uh, I guess one thing that we should probably do is let's uh, change R to a one two three four five Kind of execute that and let's go ahead and plot X so I said we're going to execute a little bit of code uh, we can see that we even get the plots down here in the bottom right showing up so we've got a standard plot uh, we can get the zoom on the plot and uh, there we go so uh, that concludes the hands-on lab and the discussion of Microsoft R open R open and Microsoft R server I hope you enjoyed episode two uh, next episode is episode three and we'll be doing an introduction to our data structures thank you have a good one